You can do everything right for months, but if you mess up your final month of prep, then you run the risk of having a huge test day drop. But not after watching this video. Whether you're trying to plan how to study for the MCAT, or maybe you're just a couple months out from the big day, this is the right video for you to be watching. I'm gonna tell you the process that I put every single one of my students through whenever they come up to me and say, John, I'd like to score you know, a 508 or a 510 or a 515. Any, any time that a student's going for an ambitious score, I make their final prep push identical to what I'm about to show you. Now, if you've seen our four month study video, then you know that this video is the promised video. It is the companion video. It is the final month of your MCAT prep. So with that in mind, in an ideal world, if you had followed the program, then you would know all the sciences, you'd have the strategies down pat, and your last practice exam would have been around a 504, if not higher. So that means that if this is the first MCAT prep video that you're watching, then I'm describing the last four to six weeks of your MCAT prep right now, but you should still continue to watch it because it's best to know how you're gonna finish whenever you start. Now, this method is highly effective. It's what I did and it is what Maggie did and we both went up over 10 points on our last month, but fair warning, it is a lot. Because it's so much, I generally prefer to have my students drag it out to six weeks instead of four weeks if they can. But if you're in a time crunch, you can do it in four weeks. But we'll get to the scheduling later in the video. First, let's talk about what you're gonna need. The essentials are gonna be good practice exams and then a way to quickly identify and review the high yield sciences. Now we're gonna look at each of those individually. So Maggie and I have spoken on this channel before about practice exams. And it is the general consensus that the best, most realistic practice exams come from the AAMC. They're the people that write the real MCAT, so it only makes sense that their practice exams are going to be the most representative of the real test, especially considering the fact that usually whenever they post a new practice exam, it is literally an old MCAT exam. So you can't get any more accurate than that. Currently, the AAMC has six practice exams. They've got one sample test, which is the one that we have broken down on this channel. They've got one free practice exam, which is one that we are currently breaking down on this channel. And then they have four full length exams that you have to purchase. So the sample test are free, is free and the practice exam is free, but the four full length exams are going to be 35 bucks each. However, the AAMC does offer something called the Fee Assistance Program. You can just Google AAMC FAP and go through the prompts and see if you qualify. And if you do qualify, then you will get all the AAMC materials for free or a reduced price. And that includes things like the question banks and the cards Q packs, which I've never touched on, but I really like those card Q packs. So the AAMC has six exams. You should have taken one exam while you were studying with us or for passage practice, which would be the sample test. So that only leaves five exams. You're gonna need about five more. So that means we've gotta to go to third party exams. In previous videos where Maggie and I spoke about third party exams, we did so pretty vaguely. Uh, we made it seem like all third party exams were equal and that we don't have a preference. Now, all third party exams, they do have their strengths, but they also have their weaknesses. <laughs> The next thing that you're gonna need is going to be a way to quickly review the high yield sciences. Now I'm gonna tell you two ways, but I'm confident that this is not an exhausted list of all the curators of high yield MCAT stuffs. Now my personal favorite way to review the high yield MCAT sciences comes with a drum roll and an Anki deck. It's the all new high yield IFD sciences guy. So this is a guide that Maggie and I spent our entire summer on because we didn't have anything better to do. And it's got all the high yield sciences explained specifically for the MCAT, how the MCAT tests them. It's professionally illustrated. It's copywritten, copyrighted. It's one of those. I mean, this thing's professional. It's a really great way to review the high yield sciences because we made sure to teach them like we tutor them. Meaning, I don't care if you know all of the sciences that you need to know for undergraduate. We are teaching these sciences how you need to know them in order to apply them to crush the MCAT. 
I also made a companion Anki deck that goes along with it, and that's why it's been taking me so long to get it out, so that you can review those sciences and those facts as you need if, for instance, you are just stumbling across this at the beginning of your studies and maybe you want to go through all those facts. But regardless, we'll throw in the Anki deck with the book. So the link for this is in the description, but if you hate us, there are other ways to study. The other option I'm familiar with is the Kaplan Quick Sheets. Now you've probably heard of these and they're actually pretty solid. Um, the Kaplan Quick Sheets, the only problem with them is that they are not limited to the high yield sciences and that they are not geared to teach. It's it's a very skeleton outline of, of a lot of the sciences and it's virtually a checklist, but it's a really good checklist and, and it's currently free. And there, so there's a link for that in the description as well. Again, if you hate us, you can use that one. If you love us, then you can use the IFD guide. Regardless, the link for both is in the description. So that's what you need. Now it's time to talk about how to apply it. Now the purpose of the final prep period is, is to practice applying the sciences and the strategies that you've spent these months learning and translate them into tangible improvements on your score. You've probably noticed really slow jumps, but if you've done everything correctly up to this point, you're about to notice some fast improvements in your MCAT score. We are going to beat the silly mistakes out of your head. We're gonna learn how to take the test and we're gonna make sure that we are so familiar with how the MCAT tests us on all these different high yield sciences that no test day panic or CP section that's 80% physics can throw us off. That's not actually something that can happen, by the way. That's just what students say whenever there's more than like one passage on physics. So we're gonna do this in two phases. First phase, high yield sciences review. Second phase, practice tests. So let's take a look at what this might look like on a calendar. So if you're trying to complete this in four weeks, you'll spend the first three to five days going through the high yield sciences. So read the high yield guide of your choosing and make sure that you understand 100% of those high yield sciences. This is not one of those things where you can play around. Make sure that you know those sciences because you're gonna be asked to apply them in like tomorrow. For the remaining three weeks, you're gonna be studying six days per week, one rest day. You're gonna take three exams per week. Hang with me. On days that you are not testing, you will spend the whole day reviewing the exam that you just took. You can use our video that explains how to review an FLE if you're not quite sure how to do that. And so your entire three weeks will consist of you alternating taking a practice test and reviewing a practice test. You'll do that for six days and then you will take a rest day. Now, this is set up so that you never take a practice exam without having reviewed the previous one. And that's very important. A seven hour test is not just a glorified measuring stick. If you're gonna take a seven hour test, we've gotta learn from it. So it's painful, but you've gotta review the test. And also to throw gas on the fire, I'm sorry. I know that this is a lot. You've gotta make sure that you keep up with your Anki. Don't hate me, I'm just the messenger. Kind of. It doesn't take that long. You've got to make sure because you work so hard to learn those sciences. So you can't just forget them. So make sure you're keeping up with your Anki. And you'll be really glad that you did. Now, if you're trying to complete this in six weeks, it's a good move. You'll spend the first five to eight-ish days going through and learning the high yield sciences like we talked about. And with the following four to five weeks, you're going to end up studying six days per week and taking two practice exams per week. It's a little bit better, isn't it? So with all that extra time of two days per week, we're gonna devote it towards patching weak spots. And this means we're going to learn some extra science material. If we if we figure out on a practice exam that, oh my gosh, I do not understand acid bases like I thought I did. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend that that extra day learning acid bases, or we're going to maybe re-review or even retake some sections, or we're going to maybe do some more targeted passage practice. If you if you're just like I just suck at cars, you should you should probably do some cars. Or maybe you just wanna watch some IFD videos and practice how Maggie and I do some of these strategies. Whatever you feel like you need to do, that's what that extra day is built in for. So if you're doing this in six weeks, then you're going to alternate taking a practice test, then you're gonna review that practice test, and then the following day, you're going to patch weak spots. You'll make two rounds of this, and then you will take a rest day. And just like with a four week one, you gotta make sure to keep up with your Anki. So just to summarize, your final push is gonna consist of three to 10 days of high yield sciences, followed by three to five weeks of taking and reviewing practice exams. The necessary exams that you're gonna need are gonna be the five from the AAMC, and then five from some other third party when it comes to reviewing the high yield sciences, make sure to check out the best, I think the only high yield MCAT sciences book. It was written with love by 90th and 100th percentile MCAT score, and it even includes a free Anki deck that goes along with it. Rumor has it, 
we have the best looking authors in the business. So check that out. Join the Discord channel so that you can study with us and keep us updated how these videos are treating you. And make sure to like and subscribe so that we can keep making videos and programs like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.